Welcome to Modern Church Leader, a short daily show to help you grow your church, be more effective and efficient, and powerful for the kingdom of God. Let's talk about culture. Let's talk about about church culture. Culture is one of the most fascinating things. It's been studied a lot, both in the secular and in the Christian world. Um, Before I get into culture, let's talk about branding for a second. You know, companies spend billions of dollars on their brand. What's a brand? In my mind, it's a feeling. When I look at a brand, if I look at, and I've got favorite brands just like you do, um, I look at Apple and I get a feeling. I look at the, I love the products. I use the products, but the brand emits something. And then you can go all the way into what companies do to create image around their brand. Do I feel cool? Do I feel beautiful? Do I feel whatever? Yeah, I know this is kind of secular kind of thoughts, but all of that goes into the psychology of people liking something and using something. And in our case, attending something. So culture becomes very critical in the life of a church. Now, there are some things on the flip side that can become very culture, uh, very toxic in church life. And toxic culture is like the reverse of powerful and positive culture. So I've got a couple of things I wanted to share in the area of culture of what you shouldn't do that allows you to create that great culture. Church politics, it has no place. When there's political things, and this kind of leads into that, the in crowd and the rest of the crowd, like if you have a situation in church life where there's this in crowd that kind of know all the inside baseball of what's going on, that creates this political weird culture and visitors will feel it. You gotta be really, really careful about that kind of relationship and relating inside. Sure, you've got a leadership team. Sure, you're gonna hang out and focus on building that leadership team. But in public meetings, you don't want any of that stuff. A lot of times when pastors are preaching and they're preaching to the front row, they're preaching to the choir, they're preaching to get some kind of affirmation or they're preaching to impress. Don't preach to impress, and preach to reach the visitor that came to church today and maybe is needing Christ in their life. So having that, that to- toxicity within relationships in church can be very, very, very terrible. Uh, another thing that will kill the culture in your church is gossip. There's a reason it's, it's listed as a sin in the New Testament. Is it, It's because it's so insidious. And as a pastor, a lot of times you are given private information and confidential information. And so if if you're the kind of person that like starts blabbing that around or you tell one of three people and all of a sudden, here's, here's the, the secret about secrets, no one can keep one. So you gotta be really, really careful that that gossip culture, and I think we've all seen it, and there are people in the church that cannot help themselves. So that either needs to be addressed if it's really bad and toxic, or you just got to make sure that those people don't know what's going on around the place because they're going to blab it. And so you've got to be really, really careful of gossip in the church. Um, I think another part of uh, the culture in church life is making sure what's said in public is the same as what's said in private and vice versa. So what's public and private has to make, it's true in our own life. For me to have personal integrity I must be that same person in public as I am in private. And I think churches need to be very, very careful of how what they present in public and what's actually happening in private. And I think people, you know, fix up on that. They get a vibe on that. The other thing about culture in the church is the A word, authenticity. So in this day and age, it's so easy to spot things that are fake. In fact, younger people make fun of things that are not real. They will literally poke fun of things that are fake. And so we've got a lot of fakeness around our world. We've we've got a lot of shallow things that are going on in our culture that are not real. And people with this whole selfie culture, putting on some kind of persona that's not real, um, having the reality that's coming from the top and the pulpit becomes really, really powerful when it comes to setting the culture in your church. And culture will affect the brand of who you are as a senior leader 
and who you are and as you are perceived in the, in the community. You always want your church to be perceived in the community for being loving, caring, reaching the lost, serving the community, generous, all the things that Jesus has taught us to be, all the things that the New Testament teaches us to live as Christians. That's how you want your church to be known. And so we need to go out of our way as leaders to make sure we're setting that culture from the top and we're preaching and teaching that culture. That way we'll be attractive to the, to the world. The world will see us and it's not something that they're going to look and say, why would I go to that place? It's X, Y, Z. It's like, you know what? I've heard great things about that church. I want to go check that place out. And sometimes people don't need Christ until they're in a crisis. And so what happens on with any square five miles of your church there's people every day waking up in a crisis. They got a bad report from a doctor. They got a marriage pressure. They got financial pressure. They're looking for answers and help. The church that you want to build and the culture that you want to create and the brand you want to create is the place when people are in trouble, they're running to you. That's the kind of power of culture that we can create in our churches. So the brand connection between culture and brand in the church setting is this. Let's go to the other side. What is people's perception of the church? Oftentimes, it's that they're not caring, they're not loving, they're judgmental. So there's a perception problem a lot of times with the church. That's why other things flourish outside of church. People run to other things. They run to other religions. They run to false teaching. They run to secularism. They run to humanism. They run to anything that makes them feel good. They run from the truth. The problem is the church too long, our brand has been, you need to change and then you can come to us. Whereas Jesus taught the exact opposite. He says, you go and fish in the world and you think I'm not a very good fisherman in real life, but I know this, you better have the bait on the hook that the fish want to eat. And for too long, the church has had the wrong bait, the judgmental bait, the looking down upon people who don't live like them and don't hold up to standards. We know that we're hypocrites, just like everybody else. We don't live to that standard all the time. So I think the brand of the church becomes critical in the area of how the community perceives the church. I've said this my whole life. Most people don't have any problem with Jesus. They have a problem with the church. So we need to represent Jesus in the community. And that way, people will tie the brand of the church with who Jesus really is and will win the world for Christ. Thanks for listening. Please review Modern Church Leader on Apple Podcasts and visit our website for more resources at tithe.ly or follow the links in the show notes.